Rhodes, uh, District Chief with Special Operations for the City of Orlando Fire Department. And I'm Sean Michael. I'm the engineer on A-Shift on Hazmat 1. We're at SBI, excited to be accepting this new uh, apparatus for our fleet. Our new Hazmat 1 is going to be replacing our older uh, piece of equipment. Uh, at the same time, we're going through an operational philosophy change where our Hazmat 1 is going to be incorporating some further responsibilities and their daily duties. So this apparatus built on a Suffin chassis, City of Orlando Fire Department is sole source suit Suffin. Uh, it's a Monarch uh, cab. Our, our previous unit only had three doors. There's only an engineer that ride, rode at it. And as we said, we're increasing our capability. So our manning is going to increase uh, substantially. So uh, we've gone with our regular four door cab. What Chief Rhodes was saying is that we had a change in operation and we're adding more firefighters to this hazmat truck. We added an additional three jump seats so firefighters can prepare for either a fire or a hazmat call. Um, we added some more compartment space up top for more fire gear um, and things that we need to store within the cab. In addition, we do have a full walkthrough that's going to be able to enter through the back of the cab and go fully out through the back of the truck. So starting with the right side of the truck, we did add one compartment onto the side that's going to carry our tall flare off field. It's about six feet tall and it's pretty heavy in weight. So we added this compartment to house that. Immediately behind that, on the bottom here, we've got our PTO-driven Harrison generator. It also drives our hydraulic tools. Uh, again, this is going to be increasing responsibilities of this uh, piece of apparatus in the city. They're going to be acting in a vehicle machinery rescue capacity. So we've increased uh, the capability here with their hydraulic or PTO hydraulic driven uh, rescue tool. It's also a uh, nice toolbox. These, this will incorporate, again, for vehicle machinery rescue as well as the hazardous materials. Uh, various pieces of tools and equipment that they'll need. And continuing on to compartment two, uh, this compartment uh, provides multiple shelves to store our uh, our different types of hazmat kits, our chlorine kits, our Cromwell kits, um, and airbags for leaks and controls. Uh, we do have a out and down shelf that will uh, for things that are a little bit heavier that we need to actually get to a lower level so we can get down. We have a little insert right here that will be able to carry um, some broomsticks um, and things like that. Right, so in compartment three, we decided that this was going to be our uh, our spill control. We're going to have absorbent up here, our hydrophobic pads, our hydrophobic booms. We added a lip to it that could keep our buckets away from the door um, and keep them back within the shelf so we didn't uh, do any unnecessary damage to the door. Um, with compartment four, uh, this is going to house our pump off. Uh, when we go to a vehicle accident and a vehicle leaking gasoline or diesel, for instance, we have a pump that's able to pump off that. So we'll be able to carry our pump, our hoses, um, and maybe some of the storage containers within that compartment. Other features that we added to this truck was a three SCBA uh, cylinder holder uh, between the wheel wells and two additionals off to the side. Again, with the increased responsibilities of this piece of apparatus, the back two compartments are going to be reserved for vehicle machinery rescue and some rapid intervention equipment. Uh, we got our slide out here. On this slide out is going to be uh, mounted our uh, vehicle struts for uh, extrication and things like that. Uh, this compartment area here is going to be for all of our case saws, chainsaws, vehicle machinery rescue uh, kits, things like that. Uh, we've got our power and uh, pneumatic uh, reels that we've we are able to tuck into some unused space in the walkthrough area in order to create some more uh, cabinet space on the outside here and our controls for that as well. The back of the truck, uh, we decided that we were going to add a weather station onto it that's going to talk to our software. If we did have a chemical release with this weather station, it leaks to a computer, works with our software and we are able to uh, plot a plume on how far we need to evacuate. We've also, uh, on this piece of apparatus, got a uh, PTO-driven air compressor that we'll show you up front. Uh, on, the, on the front bumper in the back, we've got an unregulated uh, outlet for our uh, large pump-off kit. Uh, we can also uh, break down into some regulated air as well. Underneath the uh, door to our walkthrough, we've got our 16-foot uh, straight ladder and some uh, other pieces of fire equipment. And then that brings us inside The walk so one of the features about this truck that we really liked was the walkthrough. Uh, one of the things that we talked about while building this truck was to have a walkthrough for more climate control. We have two RVAC units on top that is cooling this. So all our PPE, our, our level A suits, level B suits, 
a lot of our hazmat meters can be inside in the climate controlled environment. On the right side of this truck um, is going to be the, uh, our uh, level A garments, level B garments for hazmat. And then on the other side, within the storage unit, we have shelves and then we have outlets on the inside. And we're going to be able to put all of our meters on charge in here ready to go as we go. There's three um, shelves on this side and then we have four on the other to accommodate this. Operationally speaking, this unit is, is responsible for all of hazardous materials inside the city of Orlando. So we had to come up with a, a basically a mobile workstation for them to be able to travel the city in order to take care of all the meters throughout the city and all the other hazmat units um, that we have um, distributed throughout our uh, response area. So half of the front end of the walkthrough is a calibration area that they'll be able to calibrate all the meters that are out and any the other signed units along the way. Um, as part of that as well is the research side. So the other half of the house is gonna be the research side. So all of their um, research materials, laptops, computers, the weather station is fed in as well. So all of that information could come in. And again, this is a climate controlled area that the incident commanders and the safety officers and operational officers can come in and, um, and begin to develop an operational plan. Okay, so as we mentioned before, the back two compartments are going to be for that increased capability to this uh, piece of apparatus. So that's more the vehicle machinery rescue. On this side, we're going to have our portable power unit, our, T our portable power, uh, TNT power unit um, that they can take remotely if they need to. Some more uh, vehicle machinery rescue, dunnage, cribbing, and etc. We've got our customized uh, high pressure airbag shelf that's been uh, built for us. We've got another slide out. This will this will house our uh, rams and extended uh, hydraulic tools as well. We have a uh, decon compartment that's gonna carry our uh, uh, decon tent, uh, some of our three pool systems for technical decon, some boots that we may need for the uh, decon team. This compartment's gonna house all of our rapid intervention uh, equipment. So this will increase the capability of this uh, group of firefighters to be able to perform rapid intervention at any of our uh, structure fires across the city. All right, this compartment is going to house our overpack drums, uh, our 55 gallon metal drums, 30 gallon metal drums for our pump offs if we need to either overpack or pump off into a drum. Moving forward, again we talked about that onboard PTO driven air compressor, that's on the other side of this wall here, this is our inlet for that. We also have some reels, some power reel and a pneumatic reel. The rest of this compartment is going to house our confined space airline equipment, so our air reels, our air carts, uh, things of that nature will be housed in this compartment. So on both sides of our uh, Hazmat 1, we've got electric awnings in an effort to avoid you know, our members having to be out in the, in the elements in the weather, the hot Florida sun, uh, torrential downpours, things like that. We have extended operations, so we put uh, those awnings on both sides of our apparatus. Another uh, key factor in the design, because we have awnings going off of both sides and multiple people working around the, the vehicle, we went with a top-mounted exhaust so that can remove all those uh, contaminants out and away from all the people that are working around this piece of apparatus. So our front bumper was designed again for that vehicle machinery rescue aspect of this rig. Uh, it, the wheels are driven by that Harrison onboard PTO driven generator hydraulic system powered to TNT pump. Uh, our hydraulic equipment to be stowed away in there, as well as we've got some outlets to be able to extend any of our power equipment. And our other uh, unregulated uh, air outlet is up here as well. So whether we need to go off the front or the rear of the truck, we have access to both of those. In addition, we've got a 15,000 pound winch um, and we're capable of, of handling all things, vehicle machinery rescue, hazmat, rapid intervention.